Yeah. Yeah. Now for one minute, I've been looking for some inspiration. I got my pen, I got my pad, I write with dedication. You see this poetry, my medication. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Khayyi kamal. Thank you, Sheikh Bilal, for joining us at One Path Network. It's really good to have you here all the way from Melbourne in Sydney. My pleasure. The first time I ever heard about you, I watched a lecture. It was called Ahmed the Repenter. Oh, the and this is a long, long time ago. I remember my friend gave it to me on VHS tapes. And it was probably one of the most compelling lectures I had ever watched at that time. Because this is before YouTube. This is before Facebook. This is before social media. Literally, people are, instead of sharing a video on their wall, he's literally sharing me a video in person and it's a really great blessing to have you here with us today alhamdulillah Sheikh, the topic we want to speak about today was bullying what is your perspective of bullying in the muslim yeah. community alhamdulillah wa salatu ala rasulillah i've been a teacher for about 13 years now and we've seen this issue of bullying all the time every school the whole world talks about it it's a big thing now, also the government's gotten involved with it, um, in preventing it. Uh, the way I see it, Kamal, is that bullying is not a new thing. It's always been there. It's been there for thousands of years. Definitely. If it wasn't been there, for, hadn't been there for thousands of years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't send a verse 1,400 years ago. وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ This verse, وَيْل, means hellfire. لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ To every and I'm going to explain what every means here. To every. Humaza, Lumaza. Humaza and Lumaza are the same meaning. They are a form of bullying. In fact, they are all the bullying. Verbal, physical, by action. Except that Humaza is done behind someone's back. And Lumaza is done in front of someone's back, to their face. And Allah put humaza, which is the covert, which means the silent bullying, the one done behind your back, you don't know what hit you, mm -hmm. through signals, eye movements, mouth movements, sounds, mm -hmm. hand movements, words, statements, all these things that people around you know what they are. You don't know what they are, or you don't hear them. Mm -hmm. It's done behind your back. And the bullying is happening while you're walking around not knowing what's hitting you. That's put before the second word, lumaza. And lumaza is to your face. And we know that the one behind your back, they're both bad, but humaza is even worse than that. I've seen boys are mostly physical bullies or verbal bullies. Girls have that humaza one, which is behind your back thing. Among the students who hurt themselves the most are girls, from my experience and from study shame. Why? If somebody is bullying you physically or in open, everybody can see it. At least some people will come and counsel you, some people will stand up for you. But when someone's covert, does it behind your back, and then in your face they're friends. And they teach their friends not to say anything. What happens is that this girl or this boy don't know who to run to. They don't know how to tell their parents. And I can mention to you more as a teacher knowing of students who, one student I knew personally who committed suicide as a no, result. No, he was 14, another girl was 14. I knew her community, a Muslim as well, as a result of social media, um, bullying, um, cyberbullying. That's that's actually very scary for you to say a Muslim boy would commit suicide. And a Muslim girl. And a Muslim girl. Yeah, and and the graves are in the Faulkner Cemetery. People can pass by and below, see them. Below 15 years of age. Yeah, 14. Yeah, mostly, yeah. A lot of the cyberbullying. What, those what is it that drives a young boy or a young girl at that age to commit such a... And that's, and that's where the question that we have to address is. First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned a huge warning, isn't he? He says, uh, hellfire. First thing we have to understand is that a bully is not someone who does something once or twice. Or somebody who has driven to insanity and they start going crazy doing things. No, these people are exempt. And the person who does it once or twice, they're advised and they should stop. But they're not really bullies. A bully is a person who has a habit and consciously always does it. A person who consciously always does it knowing the ramifications of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this person is actively being an evil person. So therefore, whale is deserving of them because the amount of people they're harming is unbelievable, children from the youngest to the oldest. However, there is a segment in our community, a small number, which studies show that usually, and this is very important for the youth to understand, that a small, actually now a larger number of young people who do bully are often, often have a history of being bullied themselves. And I'm not here, not here to, to make the bully a victim. 
the bully is a perpetrator. Definitely. Because anyone can stop bullying, but some of them don't have the right guidance. And they don't know any better. It reminded me, I was bullied when I was actually in year seven, to be honest, but only because of my religious practice. And anyone who looked different, they called him weird. There were times I just, as a child, I would cry so badly and I shivered and I didn't want to go to school and all that stuff. But remembering the Sahabs and the Companions, as I grew up, these same bullies, even non-Muslims, they came knocking on my door when we were in our 20s. SubhanAllah. But these people who bullied me, I realized they had problems. They had issues. Listen to this beautiful hadith. Prophet ﷺ said, Unsur akhaka zaliman aw mazluman. Help your brother, give him support, give him victory. Whether he or she is the oppressor, the bully, let's say bully, because a bully is an oppressor, or the one being oppressed, the victim of bullying. They said, Ya Rasulullah, of course, we can help them when they're the victim. How do we help them when they're the oppressors, the bullies? They said, by stopping them. How do you stop them? If it's physical, you have to physically stop them. They're going all that, try and be in between of them. If it's verbal, then you've got to try to talk to them. If it's counseling, you've got to give them counseling. If you have to involve their parents, their family, advice, ad din and nasiha. There are so many ways you can. Instead of pointing the finger at them, let's try and help them. You know, the worst thing that we're seeing today, it's as though it's a culture that if you see something wrong, you see bullying, you see a calamity before in front of your face, the first thing people think about is, oh, I'm going to record it. I'm going to put this on Facebook. This is going to get so much views. This is going to go viral on YouTube. The last thing on their mind is trying to intervene to stop it. And this is a very, very um, toxic culture that we're seeing in society today. And it's something which teenagers really need to shun. It's a culture that we need to shun and step away from completely. Kamal, Akhi, I'm going to go further than that even. Let's go to the, some of the roots of the problems. I was walking in the schoolyard and saw a parent with their child saying, uh, stick your finger up. At who? At that kid over there. Go on. Another parent in the car park, picking up their kids. Why did you park in front of me? Oh, go and do this and that to yourself. Astaghfirullah. Excuse me, but this is the reality. When we look at our elders as role models, then we learn from them the behavior of communication or uh, justice, or we learn the communication of bullying and that the strongest, the, you know, the survival of the fittest. You know, we're not Definitely. in a jungle, subhanAllah. Definitely. So it starts with us as parents and teachers. If a teacher sees something or a parent sees something or their child comes to them, first of all, look at yourself. Secondly, what we need to do is to try and research and find out ways, tools for these youngsters and the older people. Don't think that adults are not being bullied. Parents are being bullied. Families bullied. I mean, a child sees sometimes in a family cluster the, you know, the, the father doesn't speak to his brother or the mother doesn't speak to her sister or whatever or um, they don't talk to their auntie or to their uncles or they isolate this person, or isolate that person. What's the child seeing? That's on a negative ground. On a positive, when people try to solve their problems, they, they, they commit, they don't try. Something goes wrong, alhamdulillah, look, things do go wrong, son, things do go wrong, but there are ways, inshallah, of going around it. Let's go and talk. Let's go and communicate. Maybe that person is not thinking what we're thinking. Maybe they misunderstood. Maybe we misunderstood. I advise communication. One student said to me, this person's been bullying me for five months. What should I do? I said, don't go to the teacher. They go, who do I go to? Don't go to your parents. They go, yeah, they go, I went to my parents. The parents said, tell the teacher. But you know what happened? One other student, we told the teacher, the teacher you know, spoke to them and, and some of them got um, detention, but it only increased the bullying. It turned from school to out of school. Yeah. And if it wasn't then, they turned someone else against, against them or isolating them. What's a teacher going to do if somebody doesn't want to sit next to someone else? It's escalated the problem. But I'm seeing a student not sitting next to another student. Mm -hmm. I can't force them to sit next to them. So they can say, I'm not doing it. I just don't want to sit next to them. But what they're doing is that they're isolating them. It's being, it's, it's a it's bullying. literal bullying, right. So this student, I said to him, when I was your age, I learned to bring some courage. And when that person was alone, I went to them and talked to them. I want you to go and talk to that person, but not in front of their friends. After school, you're waiting. Oh, yeah, we wait outside. He said, parents pick us up, said, go up to him and say, Salaam Alaikum. He'll say, Wa Alaikum Salaam. They're different because in front of their friends, it's something it's else. Power. There's no reason for them to show off right now and say, How you doing, Ahmed? How you doing, Muhammad? Look, man, you've been saying a lot of things about me like this and like that. And look, that's cool, but you know, like, it hurts me. And if we want to fight, we can fight. We both get suspended. We both get 
detention. I mean, we can all do that. You know, you hit me, I hit you, one of us ends up injured or whatever. You know, I can snitch about you, you can snitch about me. I go, but what's that going to do? You know, like, I'm just here to tell you, how about we respect each other and just, you know, you don't say anything, I don't say If I said anything, tell me, man. Let's talk like that. SubhanAllah. The kid went and did it. Wallahi, it worked. Look, I'm not saying 100% of the time it works, but it Definitely. worked. Almost all the time it works. But let's go back to the initial uh, thing that which I said. With, that is bystanders. The strongest and most powerful impact anyone has on stopping a bullying are the bystanders. That's why the Prophet said, Unsur liman al -mudluman. Help your brother or sister, whether they're the oppressors or mm -hmm. the ones being oppressed. The bystanders. One word. Staying and say, hey, did she say anything to you? No, but, but, but what are you? Another friend comes in and goes, look guys, she didn't say anything to you, okay? If she did, we'll even tell her off. But she didn't say anything to you and all you're doing right now is just bullying her. Just saying those words makes the bully stop. SubhanAllah. Definitely. I guess there's no blanket solution and every bully would differ. Especially, Alhamdulillah, as Muslims we have Islam as our guiding principles and perhaps we can use the principles of Islam to turn away from the, the, the bullying and the abuse. You know, we, we know the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He hears Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, or I don't even think she says, she, she um, signals that one of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is short. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is able to stop her immediately, even if it's a joke, even if it's soft. Even and what did he say to her, come out, remember, she actually signaled, didn't say anything. She didn't even say anything, well, that's Prophet how silent was. told her, you've said something. You've said something. Definitely. Some people think that by signal, I didn't say anything. Rolling your eyes or... That's even worse than this. He says, you have said a word. She just did that. You have said a word that if it was to be mixed with the salty ocean, it would be saltier than the ocean. Another one of his wives was an ex-Jew who converted to Islam. Mm. Her father was the leader of the Bani, Bani, Bani Nadir who, were the, who had conspired against Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam killed him. And uh, they said, oh, who are you? You're, you're, you're the ex-Jew, the daughter of a Jew. Mm. And she was crying. Prophet said to him, what's the problem? He says, oh, you know, Hafsa and Aisha are saying, mm. and the others, they call me when they're upset, when they say, you, you, you fought your daughter mm. of a Jew. And you should say to him, and then he said to her, tell them, yes, I'm a daughter of a Jewish man, but I'm the wife of a prophet. My father was a prophet, and my uncle was a prophet. Her father was great-great-grandmother Musa alayhi salam Definitely. and her uncle Harun alayhi salam was her husband. Subhan he Allah. gave her tools about how to respond. He didn't go up and say, hey, don't say this. Yeah. No, he gave her tools. Okay? To respond. Naam, subhanAllah. Subhan Let's remember the verses of the Quran in Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً As a matter of fact, the believers are all brothers and sisters. فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ Your goal is to always find ways to reconcile. If someone doesn't want to reconcile and they're always toxic, you just avoid the toxicity. You don't have to be really close to them. You can avoid the toxicity and from a distance. But don't be like them. Allah And fear Allah at the end of the day. Then Allah SWT gives us advices. Don't mock each other. Men don't mock men. Maybe they're better than you. Maybe they're better than you. Right. Women don't mock another group of women. Maybe they're better than you. Allah SWT did say this advice. So my advice is it's better for you to meet Allah SWT with nothing for you but nothing against you. People have harmed you, but you haven't harmed them. Everybody will go back into that soil and we're all equal then, no matter who you talk about. And Allah will judge. So don't be on the other side. Be on the side of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not say much. And shorten the time you're going to stand on the day of judgment. I ask Allah to save us from our tongues Amen. and the evil of our hearts and from bullying. Amen. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have a lot to take home for those that are being bullied, for those that witness bullying, for the families, for the teachers. We all have a role to play. So thank you so much. Um, I know this is a topic which needs a whole lot more time, but we thank you so much for your time in, in benefiting us in this. Inshallah, we look forward to seeing you again. Jazakallah khair. My pleasure. Jazakumullah khair. You, Kamal, one path. Excellent work. Salaam.